in the K2 booth with uh, Chris Prunier from uh, K2 about uh, a completely new line for 2019-20 season, the Mindbender line. Mindbender line, yeah. And I come to the conclusion when I'm thinking about what you're trying to achieve with this, that a ski that could be good in any conditions is probably the toughest challenge to produce, yes. to engineer, to think about. Yes. Because what is this, you know, as far as what's in the lineup? And then what are you, how is it constructed and what do you try to achieve? Well, we're trying to achieve with the Mindbender family, it's all about torsion control. And that's, in, in essence, what you're talking about is having a ski that's good all over the mountain in all types of different conditions, is how do we get a stiff front to be precise going into the turn, mm -hmm. but then making a ski that is forgiving and playful, and then also allows the skier to either stay in the turn or get out of the turn for whatever terrain Drift. they're doing. Drifting, mm -hmm. yeah, Jump, sequas, bumps, bumps uh, in the trees, crazy. exactly. And so we're, we, we try to do that with our new Y-beam construction. So in our metal skis, our tit titanal skis, you've got a Y-beam, so two forks go up either side of the ski in the front, reinforcing the ski torsionally, nice and stiff, making the ski precise when you're steering into the turn. Full metal plate under the binding for power transfer, mm -hmm. but then in the tail, we're only putting metal through the middle of the tail, and which, what this allows is the, is the versatility out of the ski. Which was opposite to what you did in with the, the previous family. year with the Pinnacle family, Correct. where you would have a outside Correct. The pinnacles were more based on a floaty wide shovel in the front, uh, get into the turn, shorter shorter radiuses, easier to turn. Um, this is a complete complete 180 where we're really rewarding the committed skier. So if the skier wants to, to get into the turn, is committed to his run, is going to power his run, they're going to have the product to see them through to the end. Okay, so you have a 90, a 99. Yep. 108 and 116 for men. Right. There's also a gorgeous lineup for women. Absolutely. So it's the same mind bender naming. Yeah. But then we've slightly tweaked some of the dimensions on the ski to make it more in line with what the current skier and powerful woman skier is looking for out of their all mountain ski or free ride ski. So we do 90 carbon, 88 TI, mm -hmm. 98 TI, a 106 carbon, where in the men it's a 108 TI, mm -hmm. and then a 115 carbon uh, later on. Or okay. higher up. So depending on where you ski, you if you're shooting as well for one ski quiver, for a Quebec guy, for instance, it might be a 90 but mind bender. It might be a 90 Ti. Yeah. Ti. If you go more 99, it's for a Quebec, are we thinking about a two quiver ski? It's a, it's a one. The 99 is really that one quiver ski for the customer who's trying to do a little bit of everything. Okay. But can't afford to maybe have multiple skis at home. So this is a ski for somebody who wants a little bit more waist width, but still gets that power out of that nice... Also, for you, a two-quiver ski guy would have a supercharger or a, or a yeah supercharger, supercharger and a 108. A 108, yeah, or even the 99, depending 99. on. There's some people that prefer a slightly narrower ski and the soft stuff as well. Just depends. And depends where you ski. If you spend all your time at Stowe or JP, then your one ski quiver could be a 99. Could be a 99. Or, or it could, be the one, could be the 108. That's 108. Yeah. Okay, so all the best with that lineup of skis. Thank you. So far, so good. A lot is expected. <laughs> I'm going to let you hold yeah, this absolutely. because I want to bring in what I believe will be a business changer uh, as far as boots are concerned for the Alpine with walking mode that you will use for side country and even back country because the new Mindbender, and this is the new 130 prototype with the big walk mode in the back, Yep. but super light. 1,675 grams. And so we get a real four buckle boot, power strap, yep. walking mode that is adjustable. Uh, a lot of people come to ski lessons with me and the first thing I look at is how they fit well in their boots before we go to any different technical aspect of their skiing. They're badly fitted. If their knees are too much forward, their toes, then they aim they bring in more shoulders and then everything is like too twisty and they can't work on the sweet spot of the ski. This is adjustable. Correct. So stock, the stock degree is uh, 12 degrees. Yep. You can go back to, to 10 yep. or you can go forward to 17. And then after that, the way the mold is done and so already pre-pushed here, the toe piece is perfect for me. The flex is a real 130. Correct. But that would be probably, I take it off the shell and it fits me. So yeah. I'm already sold to that. 
but you also have more than a 130 in the lineup. We have a 100 flex for men, a yep. 120 flex for men, and then this 130 flex. And then for women, we do a 90 and a 110 flex. All the same features. The difference is in the 100, slightly wider last, 100 yep. millimeter last. Yep. Uh, and then the upper cuff, instead of being in P-backs, like the 120, 130, it's in TPU, so it's slightly heavier. It's 25 grams heavier than what you would get in the 120 and the 130. Okay, so it's got Pintech yep. in, you know, front and back, and it also is a yeah. DIN already ready to fit Correct. in any regular binding. Correct. Which is amazing, because yep. you don't need to switch your sole and then screws, and then, I mean, it's, you're good oh. to go. It's one pair of boots, fits in all bindings. The only thing is that it's it's a grip lock sole, yep. so it needs to have a grip lock binding, but we will have an Alpine sole available aftermarket for, cons okay, for so those consumers if they don't want the grip lock sole. And someone who doesn't yep. want to switch their actual binding right now and Correct. spend an extra $400 Correct. or whatever. After that, yep. the new liner Completely is... Completely different yep. liner from our Recon family. Uh, we've removed a lot of the power um, nylon in the outside of our Recon. We've removed our asymmetric uh, stiff tongue on, on the front. Uh, we've added an accordion uh, feature on the back mm -hmm. so that when you're in walk mode, mm -hmm. you're not getting the liner crushing into the back of your foot into the Achilles tendon. Um, and there's laces, it's, it's, there's eyelets, so you can lace up the liner if as well. You, if if you, you like, wanted to. If you and, like that. Yeah. And in the back, that will prevent a lot of blisters Correct. that people who don't do it, you know, once a week. If you do it yeah. once a week, you always end up after your climb with blisters. Exactly. Because you're you're not used to it. Correct. Okay, so Mindbender, the boots, the whole lineup, the skis, it will be a great season to have a lot of fun on the k a lot of, A lot of new stuff. We're excited, and uh, I think consumers will be excited once they get in the product as well. Good. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks Bill.